But as I started putting this sermon together, I thought, Father, how do I motivate your children across this world? You know, the sermons that the Lord places in our heart is not just for our own gratification. Those of us that are sitting here today, we're blessed to be able to fellowship with one another and to have this in-person contact, right? I know my beautiful sister Sharon was sharing with me that how important it is that we fellowship together. And she's right. It's really, really important because sometimes you kind of forget and stumble and you're not quite sure of your way. But our way, as we go through it, has to be Christ-centered. Our trust has to be in Jesus. You know, last week we talked about we are neither Republican nor are we Democrats. We are children of the Most High. I think it's going to be really important as our nation comes together in unity, perfect unity. We won't get there overnight, but if we don't try and take those steps, we'll never get there, will we? So it's really important that we are the light to the world and that we are the salt of the earth. So what we do matters. It matters. And as we, we're going to be in Isaiah 40, verses 26 to 31 in the New Living Translation. Before we get there, though, let's talk a little bit about who Jesus is and how we're all connected. You know, there's going to be a lot of things that we as a nation are going to need to hold on to as we go through the journey of healing. You know, this election that our nation went through, 70 million voted for Donald Trump, and 74 million voted for Vice President Joe Biden. Look at the division of our nation. We are divided. And how do you heal from division? Well, first, we have to listen to each other. We have to talk to each other. We have to understand one another. We have to forgive each other. You know, listening to each other is not an either or. It just isn't. We don't, you know, listening is interesting because as we listen, we have to shut that part of our brain that wants to run past the other person that's communicating so we can collect all this information and get our point out. We got to fix them. That's not listening. Listening is taking small steps, one step at a time, Listening is hearing each other. We don't have to agree with each other, but we need to hear each other. You know, God made us a diverse, right? We're different. We're different culturally. We're different physically. We're different racially. What a beautiful thing. We should embrace that part of our uniqueness that we can come together with our differences and love each other. That's going to be our challenge as we go forward. But there's, we, the beauty is we don't have to do it alone. The beauty is that God will guide us through it. The beauty is he will strengthen us and that's where the power will come from. It doesn't come from us as individuals. It comes from Jesus. That's where our strength comes from. Our Father strengthens us. And we're going to really deep dive into that this morning. How does he strengthen us? What do I do with that strength? How, do, how can I make a difference? Does character matter? Yes, character matters. Do we all matter? Yes, we all matter. And it's going to start with us looking for what we have in common, right? 
What do we have in common? Not looking for what we have that is different. We, as, we in the body of Christ come from all different fellowships. Our brother Denny has been beside us for over three years. It'll be four years in July of 2021. He is a member of the Seven Riverside Seventh-day Adventist Church. And he's walked beside us tirelessly, tirelessly. That's the body of Jesus. We embrace and love him. We are members, are part of Grace Communion International. We are love at the Cross Ministries. But we have given prayer branchlets across this nation. From Oregon all the way to Georgia. Isn't that awesome? We have taken things that we work tirelessly with our hands to Kenya. We made book bags. We made all these things. Why? Not to toot our own horn, but to say, yes, Lord, and step into that space when God gave us the opportunity to show love to people across the other side of the world. Well, guess what, my brothers and sisters? Now we get to show love to everyone that maybe voted on the other side, right? Because we're not any of that. I can't tell you how many times I've heard someone say, well, I'm a conservative. And someone will say, well, I'm a liberal. Well, I'm a progressive. Well, I'm a Democrat. Now, that's fine if you want to identify with various groups. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm saying it's wrong when we criticize and demonize those who are not on that platform. Because that platform is not who Jesus is. We're going to be evaluated on how we help others. We've talked about that. Are, as sheep, are we following the shepherd? Or are we following something else? We want to align ourselves with the shepherd. The shepherd is Jesus Christ. It's going to be really be important as we walk through our journeys here on this earth that we get this. Because Satan tries to divide divide us. Don't let it happen. Resist the devil and he will flee. You know why? Can't do anything there. Can't do anything there. A house divided can not stand. We are in the body of Jesus Christ. We will be standing with one another for eternity, all races, all denominations, all religions, because God, Jesus came to save the world. Not just our little corner of it, came to save this world. Do you believe that? I do. And I think you believe it also. So the title of this sermon today is On Eagle's Wings. And as we unpack it, we're going to understand what that means. We're going to be in Isaiah 40, verse 26, 31. And we are going to be in the New Living Translation. Now, as we go through this scripture together, as I've always encouraged you to do, I want you, when you get home, to read the whole chapter. Understand what's being spoken here. And, and I'm trying to pull out just a small piece of it to inspire and encourage you all as you go throughout your journey this week, this month, to have some things to study on and to pray about. We want our nation streets to be peaceful, right? Worry about nothing. Pray about everything everything you want and praise God for what he's done. Embrace that as you go forward. Okay, verse 26 of Isaiah 40. Look up into the heavens. 
Who created all the stars? Right? Our creator created all the stars. He brings them out like an army. One after another, calling each by its name. You know, in another scripture, it says that God knows every hair on our head. How many hairs are on our heads? A lot. Calls each one of his stars by name. This is to tell us the vastness of our Lord. We can't even, we are like a spit in the ocean compared to who our Father is. That knowledge can carry us through anything. And that's what we're going to learn in this scripture. Verse 26 continues, Look up into the heavens because of his great power and incomparable strength. Not a single one is missing. Not a single star in the heavens is missing. I'll bet in your life you've been in areas that have shown you the vastness of creation. My favorite place that gave that to me was the Grand Canyon. I was living in Tucson, Arizona at the time, and me and my now ex-husband and my son, Aaron and his girlfriend took a road trip from Tucson to the Grand Canyon. And we started out kind of late, and as we got through Phoenix, it was kind of hot. Make a long story short, it took us longer than we had normally expected. So by the time we got to the Grand Canyon, the sky was down, it was black dark, and all you could see was this, it looked like someone had taken a shotgun or something and shot it up, and you saw all these amazing stars, thousands, probably millions of them. And each one was so tiny and so beautiful. And there were these little deer family kind of playing with each other in the front. And I thought, wow, the beauty of creation. But do you know your creator knows every star by name? I was just looking at this little piece of the sky that I could see. Can you imagine the stars of the universe and that your creator knows them by name? Wow. It's hard for us to imagine who our God is, but these words and things are written to give us an insight of who our God is. And it's so much more He's so much more vast than we can imagine. Verse 27. Oh, Jacob, how can you say the Lord does not see your troubles? Boy, do we need that as a nation right now. 400 years of systemic racism now, hundreds of years of people being murdered and killed. Six million Jews were killed under Hitler's regime. Wow, right? How great is our God because even with all that that was going on, so much was saved. We just now, it's going to be important that we remember that the Lord does not see. Remember that God sees our troubles, right? This is what he's telling. How can you say that God does not see your troubles? God sees our troubles. He sees this virus running rampant on our world. Countries are shut down. Our services, like we want them, are changed. I haven't hugged my, some of my grandchildren for almost a year. And my little granddaughter says, she's four. Grandma, when the buggy's gone, we can hug again. And so she gives me this heart. And she gives me this hug when we FaceTime. And sometimes I think, oh, Lord, I'm so tired of playing dolls over the FaceTime. 
<laughs> and she says, here, Grandma, see this? And she names them. But I think, what if I didn't even have that? How great is that, right? Don't you know God cares that I don't have that? He cares that George Floyd's breath was taken away for no reason. He cares. He cares. Cares about each and every one of us, whatever our challenges are. So we're going to learn today how to pull strength from that. Our world is temporary. But we do get to choose what we do with it. What we do with the revelations and the knowledge that God has given us. God gives us good and he gives us evil and he admonishes us to choose good. You know, for so many, so many people in our world, of, of, in the body of Christ, many do not even believe they should vote. They think they should pray. Well, you know what? God gives you food. Do you think you should eat it or just pray over it? I think you should pray over it and eat it. And I think the same thing about he gave us. People died for us to have the right to vote. I don't care who you voted for, but vote. Take, make a choice. Stand up. And don't expect either person that you are any, anyone to be all good or all bad. Do the best you can. Now that's over, right? For another four years. We've all voted. And we know who came, who's going to be our next pres 46th president. We know that now. But what are we going to do next? I pray, we pray that God will give him leadership, that God will protect our country from turmoil and strife and wars. We pray that our nation will have a smooth transition, right? Because God cares about what happens to us. And just like he gave us the choices to choose where we're going to stand and who we're going to vote for, right? We as African American people have had to go through a lot. We have, many arrived on, the, our forefathers arrived on this, in this nation as slaves and some did not. But what we've learned is we're no longer slaves. We are citizens to the most beautiful country well, we think it is, right? We're citizens to the United States of America. Some of you, your forefathers came here as immigrants. But we are all citizens together. When we all came to this nation in various different avenues and forms, to my knowledge, the only people here were our Native American sisters and brothers, right? We've been on this journey together. There's been some pain, and there's been some amazing times. And as we go forward, we will have that as, we, as well. There will be some pain, and there will be some amazing times. But we get to choose to impact the amazing times. We get to choose to sit down with our brothers and sisters who maybe voted for the other guy, right? Right? We all get to choose. And we get to respect and honor and love them. We get to look for things we have in common. We all eat food. <laughs> Maybe different cultures, different kinds. But haven't we enjoyed experimenting with different cultures? I love Italian food. I love it. I love German food. I love soul food. You know, we all have different ancestry, but God brought us together so we could learn how to love each other, so we could learn that he cares about us, so we would have that knowledge of where to step. We need to learn how to love one another. Love the, what's the first commandment? 
Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, your mind, your soul. And the next one, equally as important, love your neighbor as yourself. Wow. We get to learn to not be divisive and have division among us. We get to, it's a healing time now. It's a time for peace because a civil war will destroy all of us. It's like if you're on an airplane, would you pull the pilot out of the seat and expect the plane not to crash? That's kind of stupid, especially if you don't know how to fly the plane right? So no matter what is going on around us, we need to be Christ-centered. We need to give each other a pass. We need to listen to each other. We need to show love and understanding. Let's go on in verse 27. Oh Israel, how can you say God ignores your rights? You know, prior to this year, I had a cousin that her and I had a conversation about the African-American plight in the United States of America. And she said, why does God hate us? And I said, what are you talking about? She said, why does God hate the African-Americans? We came here as slaves. God hates us. Everybody hates us. Well, that's not what my, the scripture tells us here. God doesn't ignore our rights. My great-grandparents, they cried out to God many times. And many times God saved my family from persecution. Many times. Many times. And that's just to share with you. And I think you can share with me the same stories. How many times have you been hungry and God has given you food? How many times, you know, my, my, friend, my friend and my granddaughter's mother-in-law were praying right now for her son who's going through some legal issues. I remember when my brother once got into legal trouble and I can remember the cry that came out of my mother's voice as she realized her son, her only son, from a car accident, was going to be going to prison for three and a half years of his life. None of her children had ever gone to prison. And no one at, that she knew in her family at that time had ever gone to prison. He spent three and a half years for a car accident. A car accident. And the cry that came out of my mother, I'll never forget. But we learned, we bonded together as a family and we got through it because God was with us and he never grew weary of taking care of us. Let's go on in verse 28. Have you never heard? Have you never understood the creator of all the earth? He never grows weak or weary. Look at that. Have you ever known? Have you ever heard? Have you ever never understood who our God is? That he names the stars and knows where every single one of them are at? That's your God. That's the God that you that's the God that you're a child to. Boy, isn't Democrat or Republican or progressive kind of weak right now? That won't save us. That didn't give us salvation. God did. We don't have to fear mankind. We don't have to fear each other. We just need to come together with one another. And trust me, we're going to get an opportunity to do that over the next months, right? As this transition happens, we will need to pray every single day for the protection of our leaders and all that are involved. We're going to, have to need to pray about that fervently with our hearts. Verse 28. Have you never heard, have you never understood the creator of all the earth? He never grows weak or weary. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. 
that should give you a so much peace and so much joy. We can take everything to the throne of our Father. Everything. Every single thing. And he cares about everything that's going on in our world. Verse 29. Let's, go, let's listen to who our God is. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Wow. Even in verse 30, even youth will become weak and tired, and young men will fall in exhaustion. Can you imagine even oh, have you ever watched a little kid? I watched my little great grandson, Tage. He's uh, two. And sometimes I think, where is that energy coming from? As he's flying around and throwing balls and climbing on things and Wow, and I think, wow, you're young. I could never do all those things. But what, is, what do we know? Even our children get tired. They fall in a little stumble and they sleep, but our God doesn't. Verse 31. But those, now where do we get our strength from? Where do we get our strength from? But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. New strength. You trust in the Lord, you will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. You know, I went to Alaska on a cruise years ago, and I saw a bald eagle, and their wings are massive. Massive. That's an analogy we can all relate to. The eagle has massive wings. And we, when we trust in God, we will soar like the eagle on the eagle's wings. They will run and not get weary. They will walk and not faint. Let's not get weary my brothers and sisters. What's really the bottom line? Put your trust in no man. Put your trust in God. Put your trust in Jesus Christ. Recognize and trust that the Holy Spirit will get you through anything. God brought us through all this turbulent year, and God will bring us through all the deaths from COVID that are around us. I think it was San Antonio. I'm not sure. But there was a city in, in uh, Texas that had over a million COVID cases. And we reached that million number. Our nation, my brothers and sisters, is in trouble. We're in trouble. But where are we going to get our strength? and not be weary, to not give up, to not give up. We can't give up. God gives us knowledge. Let's use it because we do get to choose. Just like we pray over our food and we have faith that it's been cleansed and then we choose to eat. Our choice for who was going to be our next 46th president is over. Now let the healing begin. Let's let the healing begin. And our strength is in the Father. Our strength is in Jesus Christ. Our strength is in the Holy Spirit. That's our strength. And our love for each other will also bridge us, right? That's what will bridge us. Look for our differences. Our, no, our differences. Look for the things we have in common. Let's not focus on our differences. If we put our trust in our Father, we can run and not grow weary. We will walk and not faint. 
You know, people will tell us there's nothing we can do. Never believe that. There's always something you can do. You can pray for one another and know that we will be healed. Pray for the calmness in our streets and God will bring us calm. Pray for those things and stand strong even if you don't see what the calm is in that moment because everything the Lord gives us is in his time, in his perfect wisdom and love. Might not be in our time. We can't get weary. We have to trust those that have been given the knowledge to guide us through it. Let's take care of ourselves and each other. We have the ability to come together today because we're complying with the knowledge that has been given to us by our local and state governments and our national governments. Let's do what our, what our health care workers tell us to do, right? Let's be sure that we do our part. So there are some things I want to leave you with to get today. Some things I want you to take away. 